To complete our introduction to keyframe animation, let's look at looping so we can have an infinitely repeating loop of animation. So for example here, instead of having this logo slow down and stop rotating, maybe I want it to keep tumbling endlessly throughout the entire duration of the animation. So to do that, I'm going to go back into the curve editor. I'll select the object, and I can go into the curve editor through the menu, but there's also a handy shortcut on the main toolbar to open the curve editor. And here it is. So scrolling down in this pane here, you'll see I've got rotation and position. So I'm only concerned with the rotation right now. Go ahead and select that. So you see what we've got here. It's easing into this final position. And notice this dashed line here. That indicates what's happening after the last keyframe. And it's just holding that value as a constant value. So I want to do a loop. So what I'll do is select the curve and go into this menu called Controller. A controller in 3ds Max is a little program module that manages animation data. I could assign a different controller, but what I'm interested in here is this menu item that says Out of Range Types. By that is meant any range of time in which there is no keyframe data. So before the first keyframe and after the last keyframe is considered to be an out of range region of time. So I'll go ahead and click on that menu item. And you'll see the default out of range type is constant. And that means before the first keyframe and after the last keyframe, just hold a constant value. So I can use a cycle here. Go ahead and activate that and click OK. And now what you're seeing is this kind of sawtooth wave. OK. Now because I did an exact 360 degree rotation when I first created these keyframes, it's going to more or less do a correct cycle. I can investigate the rotation values by selecting keyframes and looking at the statistics down here. And this is telling me that the selected key is at a time of 0 and has a value of 90 degrees. This other key here has got a time of 3 seconds, 0 frames, with a value of negative 270 degrees. So the difference between these two is exactly 360 degrees. So it will continue to tumble forever. However, notice the shape of this is still curved. We're still getting an ease in here. So we're not quite ready to sign off on this. Let me rewind this and play this back. And you see we are getting a cycle, but it's a cycle that speeds up and slows down. So what I actually want here is a purely linear interpolation. So instead of having this nice ease in, I just want it to be a straight line. So I'll select those two keys, and I'll choose Linear Interpolation. And now I've got an endlessly repeating cycle. And it should be perfectly clean. Now in fact, what's really happening here is the object is rotating 360 degrees, and it looks like it's continuous. But it's actually not continuous, as you can see from this sawtooth wave. So if this wasn't exactly 360 degrees different from this, then we wouldn't see such a smooth cycle. So for example, if this had some other value, instead of negative 270, let's say I put in a value of, let's say, negative 200, then it's not going to tumble all the way around one revolution before it begins the next cycle. So we're going to see a jump here. Whoa! Going back into the track view, curve editor. There's another way that I can do this so that I can have a little bit more control and I don't need to worry about having it rotate exactly 360 degrees. And that is if I go back into my out of range types, there's a really handy one here, which is called relative repeat. And what that's going to do is it's going to just add to the cycle with each repeat. So each time the cycle repeats, it's going to add to that value. So this is pretty helpful. So now I've got a little bit more control over this. And I can change the speed without worrying too much about whether it's actually going exactly 360 degrees. So with this relative repeat mode, I can use my Move Keys tool. And I can say, oh, I want it to spin faster or slower. So I can select that key and move it. And actually, if I hold the Shift key down while I move it, I can make a duplicate. So I can make it tumble backwards and forwards.
Cool. I can delete that key once again. And I can also move it up and down, change it to a different value. Or I can even just type in a value here. So if I want to change the speed of rotation, one way I can do that is by simply changing the value here. So I can say, OK, well, let's say, you know, make it exactly negative 180 degrees. And there you go. That's how I can control looping animations in 3ds Max.